Welcome to another episode of Safe Place where Christians can openly and transparently discuss the struggles of walking with Christ today. Today's video is for Christians that struggle with pornography. Now, usually on Safe Place, I'll just share my testimony and kind of what's going on. But I wanted this video to be a little different. I've waited like several months. This is this was one of the first videos I always wanted to do. But I never felt comfortable doing it because I was struggling with it. And, you know, obviously, I know you can still speak and reference things that the Holy Spirit is helping you work on. But this is something that I really wanted to master. And not to say that I'll never suffer with sexual immorality or lust or pornography or temptation again. But I'm coming up on 21 days. And I believe that after 21 days, whether it's placebo or not, you can develop a habit. And so I want to share my testimony and how I was struggling with it and also provide some of the tools that I use to overcome it, if that's OK with you. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe and share this with a friend. Uh, I'll try to make this video as short and concise as possible. Uh, I feel like I started watching porn probably when I was like maybe 12 or so. When I, I think my grandma, she got me a tablet and I used it and I look it up, YouTube, girls kissing, you know how that goes. And it just matriculates and matriculates into the point where you're watching full-blown sex scenes. And, you know, it was... I knew it was wrong from the get-go, like, obviously, but I just didn't care. Uh, part of it was a lot, a lot of insecurities. I realized, you know, I, I didn't get girls. I didn't really get comfortable with that. Really, until now, I've really just started to become confident in, like, who I am, truly. And so, you know, the next alternative was pornography. And it progressed, you know. Uh, I'm not even going to go too deep on that because the Bible says to watch the talk. You know, you you watch porn. You, you know what's out there. And but I think the really thing that really kind of helped me to just look at it was I literally just was watching this TikTok and the dude said, imagine you in a third person watching yourself hunched over. And I thought about that. I was like, I literally just be just like I was like, imagine you me looking at me doing what I'm doing right now. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? And so that thought really just like, OK, bro, I got to change. And then I'm going to expose myself. But it is what it is. Me and my homeboys went out to this party. And, you know, they was like, well, Cyrus, like, talk to the girls, whatever, because I'm used to, you know, I'm not used to having to go for it. I'm used to it kind of just meet what Duke didn't say mutual interests or them coming up to me and letting me know, hey, I'm attracted to you and just moving from there. And I'm not going to act like I get a billion girls. I get, you know, one or two every other month, something like that. You know what I'm saying? And I was OK with that ratio. Like, it is what it is. But we went to this party. And I was trying to talk to this girl, and I was the little, uh, how you, uh, uh, stumbling, legs shaking, heart pumping. Like, I was, had no confidence, no game, no nothing. And I really just kind of realized, like, I've uh, adapted my mind, my body, and my soul to getting my enjoyment from a screen. And I don't have any social skills, especially when it comes in terms of women. And so that's when I was like, all right, bro, like, we got to change this. Like, yeah, enough is enough, bro. Like, uh, that, that the third person point of view and me not having any confidence and speaking ability i was like all right it's enough it's i can't do this no more and so that really led me to just really like i've always you know you know you you do you, you say i'm not gonna do it again you do it again you read this article you how do you stop doing it porn this one time i told my dad i was like i need to go to rehab like it's just so much different extremes and my apostle teaches he taught on romans 6 where Paul teaches us that we are dead to sin as a fact of life. Every believer, once they accept Christ into their lives, Christ, I'm trying not to be long, so please forgive me, but I feel like I have to set this up. When Christ comes into our life, he frees us from the bondage of sin and gives us the ability to overcome the flesh and the evil nature. He says, how are you who are dead to sin continue to live any longer in it? So because I'm dead to it, I no longer have to do porn. And so when we get saved, there are certain things that we're supposed to die to. Things that we did before we were saved, we shouldn't be doing anymore. And oftentimes for people who grew up in the church, that's hard to do because your parents were very strict with you. So it's hard. It's not like you was just being hell, sleeping around, having sex, fornicating, drinking, doing all this. You weren't doing that because your parents wouldn't let you do it. So those who grew up in the church, we kind of have a difficulty because we have to see how did I actually... Like, where was the transformation process? So I know for a lot of believers, the, the the flip side to that is we start encountering sin that we never encountered as we matriculate through our walk with Christ. I came to college, certain desires that I never had. I started, like, not wanting to do them, but I was like, I can actually smoke if I want to. I can actually 
bro, I be forgetting weed is illegal. Like, my, everybody be smoking so much. I be forgetting that. Like, that really is illegal. But anyways, I can do drink. I can do that stuff. Tattoos, party, stay up. You know what I'm saying? It's not a problem. Fornicate. Like, and not in the sense that it's not a sin, but in the sense that who's going to tell me I can't do it? Well, the Holy Spirit and conviction is a... Whew. I'd be wishing I would have get what, bro. I remember one time I told my mom, I was like, mom, the Holy Spirit is convicting me. Like, I, I, can you whip me? I'd rather get whooped than have to deal with that conviction. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But the key that really helped me was quoting the scriptures out loud because, you know, you hear flee from sexual immorality. And Paul made this grace. Wait, I was saying, what did the apostle say? Oh, yeah. So there are certain sins that we stop doing. But then there are other sins that when we finally get saved, they come to us and you have to overcome them. And certain sins we'll struggle with to the day we die. There are certain sins that Paul said uh, there was a messenger sitting by Satan to buffet me three times because God had allowed Paul to come to heaven and see the glories of heaven and just see the radiance of God. And Paul said, so that I wasn't lifted up in pride. I struggled with a sin that God didn't take away from me after praying vigorously three times. And God told Paul, my grace for you is sufficient. So there are certain stuff that we do. And I used to think porn is going to be one of those things. But I think too often people that know that scripture use it as an excuse to keep on sinning. Because nonetheless, Paul still is saying, I don't have to sin. Like It's not like you have to watch porn. It's not like you have to curse people. Like You have to be mean. You have to have anger. But you will because of our evil nature. So, uh, for the longest time, I'm thought, okay, bro, you just gotta, you just gotta deal with porn. You just gotta walk with a limp. You gotta struggle and strive. But I really just, as I was reading the scriptures and studying, Manny Elijah did a video for Twin Towers talking about repetitive sin. I was really just like, God has orchestrated salvation and sanctification in such a way to where I don't have to give in to this. Like I can, and it, it's possible, but I don't have to. And I think the problem here is the first point is that fighting, especially sexual sin, is hard. It's tiring. Like, I remember times when I used to say, I know I'm not supposed to watch porn. I would watch sermons, scriptures, fight all throughout the day, fight another day. And then on that third day, I'm like, it still didn't go. Like, I still, I'm like, bro, I, I just want to give it. Like, I literally just gave in because I'm like, fighting the enemy is tiring. And then I remember I read James chapter 1, verses 1 through 12, and James says, uh, uh, Blessed is he who endured temptation, for when he has overcome, he will receive the victor's crown of life. And so that's when I learned that God wants me to suffer and struggle through this sin. He wants me to, hold up. I had to make sure that mug was still recording. I got scared. I'm like, I know I'm not doing all this talking and it's not recording. God wants us to struggle through the sin. He wants us to overcome and fight through the sin. And oftentimes we think temptation is sinning. No, no, no. Temptation is us fighting and saying, I know I'm not supposed to do this. I'm not going to do this. Which leads me to the second point of I used to try to do it in my own power. Like I used to think I haven't watched porn for three days. I'm good. I can sleep with my laptop in my room again. I can... Uh, you know what I'm saying? What, what are some of the things I can do? I used to just say, like, I don't have to have these these blocks and preventions because I can do it on my own, but never realizing that, and this is really what's been helping me every single day. The Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord, so much for always reminding me to not grow weary in my well-doing. No, that's not the scripture. It is... Uh, be watching for the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he uh, be careful to be careful to stand when you've already stand lest you fall. So the premise of the scripture is Paul is saying that as you're fighting the enemy, be careful that no, that might have been Peter. Because Peter said the devil walks around like a I don't know. Let me get focused. But the premise of the scripture is as you're winning the battle with the enemy, don't ever get complacent and comfortable with that battle. Because it's the fight is continuing. We're going to be fighting and struggling until the day we die. My dad always tells me that, son, there's never going to be a time when you're not fighting the enemy. When you finally overcome this, he used to tell me, when you finally overcome this porn issue, it's going to be another issue. And so 
uh, never, ever, 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 ever get complacent when you're doing well and think, I got this, I can manage this, because it's when, I, every time I was like, I'm good, that's when the temptation came. And so I have to be sharp. I make TikToks every day for a Gen Z project. Whenever I see, you know, an OnlyFans model or something like, scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, not interested, not interested, scroll, scroll, scroll. Because if I get complacent and think that I can handle this, that's when I get caught up and that's when the enemy's going to get the victory. So I can never, ever allow myself to get comfortable and get complacent because when I do that, that's when the devil's going to get the victory. And so uh, the, the, the third thing that's really been helping me out and that's I believe can help you out. And I tell all my friends this is you have to speak out loud. Like too often we have the battle in our head. We, you don't ever speak these words out loud. You see something on your screen or you think of something and you're like, ooh, okay, she looks good. You're like, mm, she looks good. And then you might get up, do something else. You're like, oh, I'm kind of, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, mm. Then it's, let me look up image. Oh, I shouldn't do this. All in your head. Never verbalizing and never allowing your brain to register what's going on. You're just going through the motions because remember, you've now created a habitual act of porn. So you don't think about eating. You just, there's food, I'm going to eat. You don't have, think about breathing. You don't think about walking. These are just un subconscious habits that we've developed and that's how many of us treat porn we just in our head in our head what i have to do is speak out loud i'm not gonna do this and the scripture that has really been helping me is where paul broke down i want to say it's in first corinthians because the corinthian church they were going to the temples uh and sleeping with the prostitutes and paul had to say i used to always wonder what this scripture meant when paul says uh you know, you who commit a sin with your body, every other sin a man commits, yada, yada, but you commit a sin with your body. In my mind, I'm like, every sin you commit with your body. If I'm being angry and cursing at somebody, that is, I'm using my lips to do that. If I am lusting after a woman, I'm using my eyes to do that. So I never really understood that scripture. But Paul made this point where he said, your body is a temple and it belongs to the Lord. And by sleeping or engaging in perverse sexual immoral activities, you are connecting the body of God with sin. So thereby making Christ a sinner. That blew my mind because I'm like, if I say I belong to God, which I do, and I take my body and connect it to the enemy, then I'm taking Christ and making him a sinner. And then furthermore, you go further and you think about the fact that we've been freed from sin. So it's like I'm doing this. I'm doing this. It's not like someone is doing it for me. And so I had to really look at myself and, and, and I was like, wow, God, forgive me for taking your vessel for granted. Saying that out loud to myself, I'm going to connect my body to the enemy. And then Paul talks about in Romans chapter six, how when we sin, we make ourselves useful to the kingdom of darkness. So it's like I'm apostle said in the message, I'm making myself a, 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 a vessel for the kingdom that I don't stand for. So it's like I'm attaching myself to sin. With porn, we oftentimes think I'm not hurting nobody. I'm just helping me. But we have to remember, guys, it's a spiritual battle going on. So you just thinking about you in your private corner, in your room, in the restroom, wherever you do what you do. There are spiritual things that are happening as a result of what we do in the natural. And so that conscious reality has helped me to. I'm, I'm recording the video. Y'all good. Y'all good. That conscious reality, sorry guys, that conscious reality has helped me to overcome and fight the enemy because I'm like, I'm going to take something that belongs to God and connect it to sin. I'm not going to act like I don't still struggle with that problem because obviously we're at the age where we, I sound like somebody, mama, but you know, you know what I'm saying? We in college, I'm a handsome young man. Y'all are handsome young men and, and beautiful young women. And so the temptation is there, if not with porn, with real. And that's what I'm really kind of struggling with now is the real life. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, keep fighting. Uh, I haven't really engaged in the battle of fornication because I really, that's something I just don't want to do. I don't have a desire to give up myself to, to any woman, especially in our day and age. But I really want to hold on to that because I'm 18 virgin. I want to keep that going until I get married. Now, I feel like if I've done it for 18 years, I might as well just take it all away, right? So, man, I really hope that this video blessed you guys and that you were able to get takeaways. And I hope this wasn't too long. I really apologize if it was because 
I really think this video can bless a lot of people. I know a lot of my friends that struggle with this and I see it on the internet. A lot of people just saying like, and, and it is hard. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna act like it's hard. Like, even if you don't see any pretty women in your vicinity, which I'm not gonna be disrespectful, but on on TikTok, and TikTok is the worst. It used to be Instagram, but now it's TikTok. Every time you scroll, if you don't if you don't make the algorithm understand that you don't want to see this stuff, it is gonna pop up, bro. Aiden Ross, E dates. Uh, shout out to Chris Cousin. He be in Houston. Uh, would you? What you rate me on the one to ten? Can I grab like? Uh, who else do I be seeing? I, it, it's just it's so. Uh, they always be doing the dances. Like it's hard. It is hard not to go, especially when you don't think that you're hurting anybody. You're just helping yourself. But remember, and here's the last thing that has helped me. I remind myself that every time I give into it and I say I'm not going to fight and give into it, I hate myself. And so I, whenever you've gone so far, it's like I know how I'm going to feel when I do this. So I'm not going to do it. Even now, the enemy is tempting me because there are times when I read the word, watch a video, and then boom, like, like scripture, and then boom, the temptation comes. But by the power of Jesus, Satan, I bind you and I refuse to connect the body that belongs to God. As I'm blessing people, Satan, I refuse to attach what belongs to God and give it to you in Jesus' name. I just told the devil that for me. And that's what you got to tell him every time, y'all. And I promise, y'all, you know, DM me. Com Maybe you don't feel comfortable putting it in the comment section, so I won't ask you to do that. Reach out to me. And I want to, like, really pray and really work through this together because I know so many different people that do it. But they're so afraid to talk about it and they don't realize that's where Satan wins is in the secrecy. When the Bible teaches us, let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. Y'all, we're a body. We're a unit. Satan thrives in isolation. Porn especially is a sin that thrives in secrecy and isolation. And so you have to bring that to light. I know a, there's a good Bible plan uh, that's like a 40-day Bible plan for porn. Uh, I'll try to link that in the description. I'm trying to throw out everything that I know that I've seen over the years. Uh, think about when you're in a battlefield. I watched this article, read this article, and he said, when you engage in porn, it's like it, uh, you've been withstanding your enemy for three days and he, he's looking to attack you. And all you have to do is be out of your post for one day. And that's all it takes for him to overtake you. So uh, I really think that's a lot. I'm trying to dump out everything, everything, everything. Be strong and understand you're not alone. And... Porn is fake, bro. It's, it's artificial. Like, you know, it's not even scientifically, it's not like it would be better for you to, and I don't mean this because I'm a believer. I don't really me believe that mean this, but it would be better for you to just go fornicate than, I, I do not mean that literally, y'all. I'm speaking from a scientific or biological perspective. You're taking your life energy, the ability for, for men, the ability to give sperm, women, the ability to enjoy pleasure, and you're giving that to a screen of people who don't. Here's the last comment I'm going to make that really helped me. I was watching this video of this one person who I, who I you know, engaged, watched the video with. And they, they did an interview and I was listening to her talk. I'm like, bro, this girl is weird. Like, I gave up my life energy to this. I sound like Tula Minati. But like, I gave up my essence and my being to her. And she acts like, like, ugh. I had to literally, like, and it was like a shock to reality. Like, bro, what is wrong with me? <laughs> and so understand that the people y'all being y'all meet through or y'all are masturbating to, these people are weird. These people don't have a relationship with God. These people are, some of them are actively working for the kingdom of, they understand that what they're doing is from the kingdom of Satan. Like they're actively working against the kingdom you stand for. Some of these people you would never, you would never, some of these people y'all don't even have the confidence to go up and talk to in person. Some of these people, if y'all were to see them interact in a real life situation, you would be disgusted at yourself for even thinking that they're attractive. Like there's more. And as I've really started to shift my brain away from porn, I've noticed that there's more to women and to life than just looks like, what is your mind like? Like, how do you think? How do you speak? How do you talk? What are your ambitions? What are your goals? And so, you know, like they say in the articles, y'all, porn really does mess up a lot of relationships. But above all, it's a sin. Like, that's the ultimate. And 
Yes, God gives us grace and forgiveness, but there will be a penalty and he will judge us based upon that sin in eternity. So without further ado, I'm going to wrap up this video. Uh, if people do comment in this video, I'm, please, y'all, be, be respectful. Be patient. We are all struggling. Let's not rebuke anybody, attack anybody. Uh, thank y'all so much for supporting this channel and this page. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and that's it, man. We got we dropped the eye to eye video where we debated this church necessary. Me and Elijah discussed whether or not Christian tattoos, Christians can get tattoos. And Michael shared his testimony about uh, being fatherless and how God came into his life as a father. So y'all check those videos out. And I'll be with y'all next time.